I want to talk a little bit about commercially uh, available wearable devices and kind of hear your thoughts on that. What's the validity and acceptability of commercially available wearable devices, in your opinion, um, for measuring free living step based metrics in people with MS, I think particularly across different levels of disability? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, especially for MS participants or patients, they have different uh, mobility levels. Some of them use um, their ambulatory without device or some of them, their ambulatory with a single device um, or to uh, bilateral support. So for these individuals, we are um, hopefully we can find the optimal devices for capturing their ambular, uh, ambulation over time. But for um, people, our participants in this study, um, they are all ambulatory uh, without support. So we measure them using uh, accelerometry, um, uh, which is uh, waste-borne devices. We capture their um, motion or uh, accelerations at different axes, three axes across time. So we can use some, use some algorithms to uh, quantify these activity counts or to represent them as step counts. That's how our data is uh, collected from. So for commercial-wise, um, a lot of devices like digital watch that we're wearing uh, and then phone, uh, mobile phones, or a lot of apps can tell you uh, how many steps you walk every day to track your activity. There are also um, apps, um, I think there are um, some apps in Google and then some apps in the Apple um, and then also Fitbit. It, it can simply tell you how many steps you walk per minute, which is very interesting uh, to look at, to monitor your performance in a daily basis. Mm. Let me see. Are there any other insights that we've we've not touched on yet from, from your work specifically or any other types of applications or implications to applications that we haven't discussed yet? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, the reason why we focus on measuring or capture real-world performance is that they can be used as their target outcome for intervention. So as an exercise scientist, we believe that exercise and physical activity is a very powerful stimulus for people with MS to improve their function, uh, especially their physical function in cognition and brain health and any other behavioral outcomes that can be improved. It's such a powerful stimuli. Think about it, if you involve a single bout of exercise, even a walking, um, weightlifting uh, for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, it's going to stimulate all of your body different system, neuromuscular system, uh, cardiorespiratory system, all these senses, they work um, in a collaborative way to have, um, to make you perform better. And then over time, if you expose yourself to these stimulus, your body is going to adapt. They will improve better function and performance on a daily, daily basis. So we focus on exercise training there are many intervention trials along those lines. We want to um, target on different populations, especially MS. Um, there are different age groups. We've done um, health, um, uh, younger population. There also work on um, older adults with MS, which targeted their cognitive uh, impairment and the mobility dysfunction to improve such outcomes through different type of exercise. Yeah. Interesting. 